All righty. So again, this is our last set of notes. We won't have to do this for science, I guess. Let me clarify that. For science, it's our last set of notes. So the hope is to finish this today, which I don't think will be an issue. And then tomorrow we can start the like small side project that we'll do. So under science, if you scroll down, we should have a new assignment posted. Is it not there yet? I think I got it on three. All right, let me get it. All right, now it is um, posted and you can refresh your page and it should be called Why is Biodiversity Important? The last set of notes we're going to do. Once you refresh your page, it should be there and you can open up the Google Docs where you're going to do the copy and pasting. And you can open up the Google Slides where you can copy and paste from. Okay, so open up both of those for why is biodiversity important. Okay. And let me uh, say one last time, this is the last time we should be on those notes or on uh, Google Slides like this. Um, I would prefer not to take them away and have you guys have to type everything. So stay out of the chat, please. And um, we'll be good. So I shouldn't see anybody in our class in the chat. Kapish? Kapish, good. So we have one little over a page of notes to do. And I can see quite a few of you guys on the Google Slides. Are we ready? Shouldn't take us too long. Guys, chairs on the floor, please. Thank you. Hi. Our first slide. The importance of biodiversity. Remember, biodiversity means that there are differences between species, between types of plants, animals, humans. It just creates the differences on our earth. Yeah. You mean like mountains and stuff? That's not necessarily biodiversity because the bio in front of it means that the things are alive and a mountain and stuff isn't alive. But the different places that things live allow for more biodiversity because you can have more things live if this, the climates are different. So biodiversity <clears throat> is important to stability and success on, of a species on Earth. Biodiversity will increase the stability of species. So that means that it will keep the species alive for longer. Biodiversity helps ecosystems adjust to different disturbances. So a fire, an earthquake, other things that could happen. And by the, wow, biodiversity increases the productivity of an ecosystem. So how good the ecosystem is. I'm going to give you a second to type that out. So, there's a couple of things that are important to biodiversity. Our next slide. So, this part talks about um, how biodiversity increases the stability of a species. So, the ability to keep a species alive for longer. When there is a greater diversity within the species, so there are, let's say we're talking about 
um, a Jaguar, right? If there are a lot of different qualities or characteristics of that Jaguar, Jaguar, the more um, likely it is that the species will be more stable. So my more diversity in a species means there is a greater variation in the individuals of the species. They have different traits or a combination of traits that helps it uh, survive for longer. If there is a change or a disturbance in the environment, such as a disease, a diverse species, so one that has more biodiversity, is more likely to be able to get through whatever bad thing is happening. It's more likely that at least some of the individuals will survive and be resistant to the disease or be able to adapt to the changes that are happening in the environment. So the more traits that a species has in terms of like um, physical traits could be like how ducks have webbed feet or a jaguar has sharp teeth. Those physical traits can help those species survive or it can be like mental things of like, I don't know, dogs are really smart. So are dolphins, right? Things like that. Most dogs are smart. Some of them you're like, okay, you're not very smart, but that happens. Um, so the more traits that a species have, whether it's mental traits or physical traits, the more likely it is to survive for longer. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes on this slide. Wait, am I late? Um, a little bit, but that's all right. We're on slide number two, I think. We're just doing the importance of biodiversity notes. So you can either catch up Sorry, or... Sorry, I have internet issues. That's okay. I think everybody's having internet issues today. There, there seems to be some issues with it all over northern Arizona. We are in northern Arizona. I mean, we're in the south of the United States, but we're in northern, the northern part of the, like, the state. Okay. Nice. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and go on to our next slide. Remember, you guys have access to these if you need to catch up later. Okay. So, we know that biodiversity also helps ecosystems adjust to disturbances, whether any type of disturbance really. So when there is more biodiversity in an ecosystem, it's more likely to overcome whatever disturbance happens. So if it's something like a natural disaster, like a fire or a tornado or a flood, um, something that will make the ecosystem not go very well, right? If there's a fire, it's gonna change the whole ecosystem. One second. Um, if there's more biodiversity, it's more likely that at least some of the species that live in that ecosystem are going to survive and that the ecosystem will continue to function after the fire or the flood or whatever happened to it. Yoshi, what's your question? Um, what does, uh, like, if you're in a rainforest, what would, what would that earthquake do to It might knock down a few trees. Um, could cause like a mud slide if there's a hill that's really muddy. That's kind of it. Not a whole lot. But if it knocks over trees, those trees are home to some birds, insects, some animals. So it could cause those animals to die because they lived in that tree. So things like that. They probably could, yeah. Or they got crushed by the tree when it fell. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. We do about one more minute on this slide.
All righty. <clears throat> Next slide. This one talks about how biodiversity will increase the productivity of an ecosystem. So there are more interactions between organisms in an ecosystem that has more diversity. So if we think about something that's like a rainforest, there are tons of different types of animals there. You have plenty of different species of birds, big cats, snakes, monkeys. All of these different organisms will interact with each other and create more diversity, which makes the ecosystem a better place to live. It's more efficient in terms of what it needs to do as an ecosystem. It might be more productive as well. Lots of different things. Okay. Yep. I'm going to give you guys about three minutes to just kind of catch up here. This is the only thing we have to do today, so cool. we're not really in any rush. Okay. I'll let you know when we're done. Okay. No, not that. Um, uh, I don't really know what we're going to do for that. You're not even going to be here. I know, I'm just saying. Okay. I know, but like I I want to get some of the best Do you want to have it? Yeah. No. What about one of the Yeah. I've seen them. Well, yeah, I was born in the 1990s. Really? Yeah. I guess I don't know. How old are you right now? I, you guys know how old I am. I told you. 25. 25, yeah. Oh, I thought you were in your 30s. Wow. I'm only in my mid-20s, yep. Oh, I thought you were in your mid-30s. Wow. Why are you making me look old, Skylar? I don't even look like I'm close to 30, I think. Why All right, we're going to give about one more minute on this slide, and then we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, you can always finish it up after we finish. It's fine. Or just what? The recording? Sure, the recordings do go up still. Um, on Schoology. I mean, I guess they're on YouTube too, yeah. But. On your lookup? Well, would you not rather have us on YouTube? I would rather you were not on YouTube, yes. I'd rather go on YouTube than I'm pretty sure most people would. All right, let's go ahead and look at our next slide. So, loss of biodiversity means that you are losing the different things that could be in an ecosystem. So, you are losing trees, different types of trees. You're losing different types of plants and animals, all kinds of things like that. But it can really damage the ecosystem if you don't have biodiversity. That's not one place all over the world. It's most of the world at this point. Yeah. The amount of pollution in the ocean is slowly killing thousands and millions of fish and, and sea animals all over the place.
Okay. All right, well, let's put this back up. Are you ready for our next slide? Yes. Okay. All right. So, why is it not going? There you go. More about the loss of biodiversity. The loss of a habitat, so the ecosystem, can decrease the, di 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 the diversity in an ecosystem. So habitats are lost when humans harvest the land and resources from natural environments. Basically, when we as humans move in and we cut down trees to build things, or we start fires on accident or on purpose, and it burns up environments, things like that is not good for these animals' habitats or the ecosystem. There's other ways to get them out than set them on fire. Plus, dead trees can actually be home to a lot of plants or a lot of animals. Like yeah, like certain insects and things like that. Yeah, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of habitat is also lost by natural disasters like floods or forest fires. Um, this loss, uh, the, the, I can't talk anymore. The loss of ecosystem diversity, so loss of trees or different plants and animals in an ecosystem can lead to fewer places for animals or organisms in general to live. Without those habitats, organisms become endangered or they die off and they go extinct. Um, so we need this biodiversity so that plants and animals can survive. <laughs> the loss of ecosystem diversity can cause food or vital resources to go down. Humans and other organisms depend on these things to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Before we even discover them? Yeah. If we um, harm the environment so much that we aren't able to discover new species that can potentially help us, yeah, and we end up killing them off before we even discover them, who knows what could have been, right? Or there's things that do help us right now that we're slowly killing off too, like bees. Bees are super important for the environment and keeping, yeah, but. People kill bees all the time, and we're destroying their habitats all the time. It's not good. Skylar? You okay? Okay. Yeah, let's not lean back on our chairs now, please. I heard I don't know. Yeah, so let's say there's a plant that we haven't discovered yet, and it has like the cure for the cold or the coronavirus, who knows? And we haven't discovered it yet. If we, as humans, destroy the habitat that it needs to survive, we're never going to know that there was a cure to it or something like that. This is not true. I don't know if there's a cure for corona, so don't use that against me at some point. But things like that, like we use a lot of medicines from plants, like natural things to help heal different parts of us. Like aloe vera, you know that stuff, the green stuff you put on after a sunburn? That comes directly from a plant. If we kill off that species of plants, we aren't gonna get that stuff that soothes your sunburn anymore. That's a drink, you know that? It's a drink? Yeah, aloe vera water. It's good. Huh. Okay, so it probably, I don't know what it does if you drink it. it sounds good though. Huh. Dallin, you got a question? Skylar, focus on. Yeah. All right, let's look at our last, or is it our last slide? Nope, not the last slide. The next slide. Okay, good. Some species uh, diversity can be lost in natural events as well. So forest fires and disease can kill off different species. Yep. There are also some human related things like hunting, 
or deforestation. Deforestation is when we as humans cut down the forests. This type of stuff can kill off species as well because one, we're hunting them, they're dying, or we're cutting down the trees that they live in. Not good things. When you lose species diversity, it will decrease the stability of an ecosystem. And it could mean the loss of an undiscovered species. Is this where you got this? Okay. It could mean the loss of an undiscovered species that might have medicines to treat or cure diseases. Yeah, that's why I was like, is this where you got it? Yeah. So, Charlie. Yeah, that's fine. So we want to do our best to protect the environment. Right now, we as humans are not doing that at all. No, no, we're not. Yeah, that's not enough. In the next, there's a lot of scientific evidence that supports that in the next 12 years, if we don't change how we treat the environment as a human race, we will lead the planet to like the point of no return where we are not going to be able to correct the amount of climate change that we have caused the planet eventually yeah it's not good yeah if we can't fix it in the next 12 years we've done permanent damage to this the, the, the earth okay put your chair on the floor what <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's just not enough. There's so many other things that we need to do. I'll I'll find something, like a video to show you guys on it or something. But we definitely need to clean out the ocean of all the plastic. That's a major thing. We need to cut down carbon emissions from big major factories. Huh? We need to fix climate change or else we're not going to be able to save the planet from it eventually. It's bad. Um, are we... We'll talk about climate change another time. But next slide. Um, when a species population decreases, so they have less numbers in the species, we call the species endangered. It when it becomes endangered, the genetic diversity of a species decreases. If there is less genetic diversity, there is less chance that the individuals will be able to cope with the changes or disturbances of the environments which means that they will probably be led to extinction because they can't handle the changes to their environment anymore. So it's not good. Lots of bad things happen when there's a loss of genetic diversity. If there's no plants, then humans can't survive. We need the oxygen from plants. Why did it have to be plants that have to provide oxygen? That's just how the world works. Uh, symbiosis. Yeah. Yep. Humans and plants have a symbiotic relationship where we both benefit from what happens, right? The plants need the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, and we need the oxygen that the plants give off. Yeah. Okay. This is actually the last slide. So it, as you finish up the notes, you are able to turn them in. If you are online, you'd be good to go. And we will see you guys at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning for ELA. If you, But make sure you guys finish up those notes and get those turned in, please.